Good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Bless, bless them. Oh, yeah. There we go. We live. Praise the Lord, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Glory to God. Happy Thanksgiving. We're grateful unto the Lord. It's still Thanksgiving, and I'm saying happy Thanksgiving because we still have a lot to give thanks for. Especially because the doctor's in the house and the doctor has medicine. How can you get upset or not be thankful that a doctor who is 24-7, always on call, always up, and even knows the remedy for every ailment. Happy Thanksgiving. Today's morning medicine. Uh, prescription come from Proverbs chapter 29, verse 26. Chapter 29, verse 26. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Chapter 29, verse 26. And the Bible says, many seek the ruler's favor but justice for man comes from the Lord. Many seeks rule. Many seek the ruler's fate. Many seek the ruler's favor, but justice for man comes from the Lord. I was just thinking about this thought. You know, with everything going on and all these things happening in the world today, you know, uh, there's a lot of arguments about justice. There's a lot of arguments about justice. You know, when you look at any case um, that's presented in court, you always have a split decision. And what I mean by that is people that say that person deserves this while the other side says that person deserves that. Or if people come into agreement, the punishment in itself, there will be a disagreement or a division pertaining to how to handle the sentencing of an individual. Especially those who are closer to the case as far as a relational um, connection. Rather it be that somebody's son, daughter, brother, cousin, uh, grandma, uncle, aunt, whatever the case may be. There's always going to be some type of division. There's going to be opposite thoughts pertaining to the case in itself. How the case is pre presented, what facts are hidden, what's being shown, all these things, the type of representation, the judge in, in himself or herself, Whatever the case may be, there's always going to be some type of division. But I want to say this in light of everything. And I want to say this for our morning medicine. That believers may not lose hope. What do I mean by that? Do I mean that losing hope that believers the way they decide the case, that means that in itself is what the verdict should be. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that we have to be reminded of the God in whom we serve. And oftentimes, because of our feelings or attitude towards a specific case, we forget about the Lord who's over all. We forget about the God in whom we serve is the great judge for he is justice. And we forget about that. So for our morning medicine this morning, I want to remind us about this God. 
I want to remind us about the ultimate justice is from the Lord. Ultimate justice is from the Lord. I'm not here to argue about what sides, depending on what case you're talking about. No, no, no. I'm here to remind us that ultimate, the ultimate, ultimate judgment, ultimate judge, ultimate justice is from the Lord. And that in itself is a reminder so that we don't allow our heart to be attacked and have our attitudes feeling some type of way, this way, that way, because the verdict didn't end the way we wanted it to end. And it does, it, that, and that's regardless of whatever side of spectrum you stand on. Ultimate justice is from the Lord. Let me read this scripture to get us in a mind state. The Bible says, Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Let me read this scripture real quick. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. I'm going to start in verse 27. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. It says, be rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. What is that scripture talking about here? If you notice in verse 27, God says he hears everything. That nothing gets away from him. Nothing. He hears it loudly. The Bible even lets us know that in Genesis, when Abel, the first recorded murder in the scriptures, the Bible said that Abel's blood cried out to God. Abel's blood cried out to God. To let us know that God heard, God saw Abel murdered. It didn't get away from him. And I want us to be reminded that nothing gets away from God. Nothing gets away from God. The kids that were kidnapped never found the unsolved murders. All these things may get away from man, but they will never get away from God. True motives behind crimes where sometimes the motives is blurry, sometimes is not in itself identified, Nothing gets away from God. For he is a discerner of the heart. And nothing gets away from him. Nothing gets away from God. And the Bible here lets us know in Matthew chapter 10. That one form of justice is on earth. But there is a greater justice. From the one who's able to put your body and soul in hell. <clears throat> Great question. So the question on here, one of the comments says, are we not to fight for justice on earth? No, of course not. I believe that God has made lawyers and God has put the, the justice system on earth. It's supposed to be God, God focused, God centered. But what I am saying is that sometimes we won't receive the justice on earth. 
the justice that we're fighting for, the justice that you think uh, or perceive is the right justice, sometimes it doesn't happen like that. You can fight and fight and fight, but it may not end the way you want it to end. That's what I'm communicating for this morning medicine for us to be reminded that ultimate justice comes from the Lord. And there's cases that's going to go against what believers even think should go. But yet, we should remember that ultimate justice comes from the Lord. So yes, in our righteous stance with God, yes, we should fight for justice. And I pray that every time we fight for justice, that we seek the Lord in fighting for justice, in the way that he wants us to fight for justice, in the way that he calls us to fight for justice. But on this side of the earth, on this side, as believers, we must understand that it's not always going to end the way we think it should end. And that in itself can affect our hearts, affect our attitudes. And we, sh we can feel some type of way about this or about that or this or that, whatever the case may be. But we have to be reminded that the ultimate justice is from the Lord. And even though it may not went that way on earth, it will go right in heaven. So we should allow ourselves to carry a burden because the verdict didn't end the way we wanted it to end. Or the verdict didn't go the way we wanted to go. Or that we think somehow that people are getting away with murders or people getting away with rapes or people getting away with, I mean, just fill in the blank with all types of wickedness. Fill in the blank. There's people out there right now that are doing things behind closed doors right now. Right now. People are right now plotting on abducting ch children for sex trafficking. There's people out there right now because they have this amount of money and they sometimes get off with cases. But we have to not allow that to uh, disharden us because we have an ultimate judge who is and will stand for ultimate justice. And trust me when I tell you, nobody is getting away with anything. And in Matthew chapter 10, I'm telling you, it's scary when we, when we have to face him. And that's what I hope is be, hope is always or have to be in because we have a God that is just over all. Nobody gets away with anything. I'm telling you, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart to see children and all these people out there right now doing things to children, doing things to people, all this stuff going on. It breaks my heart when I see unsolved murders. When I used to watch those crime shows, I used to be a big, big, big fan Big, big fan of America's Most Wanted. And I used to get upset about when those people do things and they never get caught. Or murders that go unsolved and it'd be years and years and years and they become cold cases. Or what about this? What about when people go and do 30, 40 years in prison and then they never, they never committed the crime. But yet the person who committed the crime, where are they? And that can do something to a person. That can do something to you. That can do something to a believer. And we'll forget that the God we serve is ultimate justice. So I shouldn't be disheartened. I shouldn't allow that to affect me to a place to where it, it affects my attitude, affects my countenance. Why? Because at the end of the day, I have to remember. We have to remember that we have an ultimate judge, and that ultimate judge, there's always going to be justice. Nothing gets away from him. Nothing, 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 nothing uh, passes by him. 
and everything from him. Hear what I'm saying? Everything from him will be just because he sees it. Even the people that helped, they don't, they're not even going to get away with anything. Why? Because he sees all. And all wickedness will have to be answered for because he's a God of justice. He is justice. So I want us to be encouraged. Pray. That's why the Bible says pray. Pray for your enemies. Pray, pray, pray. We should all be in prayer. Why? Because we have a God, ultimate justice. And our prayer should be for those to come to the Lord and repent of their wicked ways because they don't want to see the ultimate ju judge in that wickedness without repenting, without turning, without confessing. They don't want to meet him in that condition. So we should always have a heart for him who is just. And because he's just, we don't want anybody to meet him in that state because they're going to have to answer for that. And sometimes people will have to answer. Trust me when I tell you, nobody's getting away with anything because we have a God who's ultimate justice. So I just want to help us with our morning meditation to help us as believers. Because sometimes whatever side of the fence you stay on, whatever side of the fence you're on, it doesn't matter. I'm not here to argue about, hey, what case or this case or that case. No, because as a believer, God knows all the facts. God has everything and some things we don't even see. Some things we don't know some facts that's behind the scenes that we don't even know. But yet it didn't miss God. God knows. And we should pray for any and everybody that their hearts, because you can't hide your heart from God. You can hide it from us, but you can't hide it from God. I don't care if it's even self. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But what does matter is that we have an ultimate God and the ultimate justice comes from him. He sees our motives, even see those people who's taking advantage over charities, stealing money from churches. Nobody's getting away with anything. Leaders in the church doing all those, all that wickedness, nobody's getting away with anything. Because we have a God who is the ultimate justice. So don't allow that to affect your attitude. Don't allow that to affect your countenance. Don't allow that to even affect your relationship with the church. <laughs> I even say that. Because we have a God who's an ultimate judge. And this is what this is what I always say, even when people who stealing money from the church. Man, I feel sorry for when you have to face God if you haven't repented from that state to steal from his people because you're going to have to face a God who's not only able to destroy the body but also to destroy the soul in hell. And I'm telling you, you don't want to meet that God in the state that you're in doing the things you continue to do. So again, don't allow that to dishearten us, but let our hearts be encouraged because we serve a God who is a God of justice. And that is the ultimate justice. So I don't care if you get away with from earth. Trust me when I tell you, you won't get away from it when you have to face him in the gates of heaven. So let us be encouraged with our morning medicine that we have a God of justice. So I'm even telling you right now, if you're hearing this morning medicine and you've done some things and you've done some things that you've hidden or you've done some things or continue to do some things that you think nobody sees, no, I'm letting you know that God sees and you should be afraid to face him in that place where you think is hidden in darkness when to him it looks like light. So I would, I would plead with you that you need to repent of it to remove yourself of it and to give it to him so you not be judged for it. 
because we serve a God who is a God of ultimate justice. And we should be afraid of the one who's able to destroy the body and the soul in hell. Be encouraged.